All right, Roofless fans, we're talking Season 2, Episode 7, entitled The Code. Um, this was a pretty good episode, episode, all things considered. You know, I did feel at some points, some points, you know, it did have that rinse, wash, and repeat cycle of every episode of Roofless. You know, can we trust this particular character? Oh, the plan is this. We need to make sure we leave at this specific hour. No, you shouldn't do it. It's a bad idea. Yada, yada, yada. But um, I do say I do feel like this episode had an interesting range of acting from various characters. There were some very good scenes. I, I laughed a few times. And to be honest, uh, I think it's one of the best episodes of season two thus far. So I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. Yeah, there were some very good episodes. But, you know, before we really go further into the episode itself, um. I'm more of a fan of like consistency. What I mean by that is sometimes I wish episodes were shorter. I mean, this episode itself was about 51 minutes long. Uh, so, you know, sometimes I remember when it used to feel like a treat. I'm like, oh, snap, this episode was like over an hour long. Or, you know, this episode, oh, it's only 40 something minutes, but it really felt like it went somewhere. So, you know, sometimes it does catch me off guard. Maybe it's because of my schedule. So it's like, Okay, great. All right, I watched Delilah. Now I need to watch Ruthless. Then I discover the episode is almost like 20 minutes longer than I expected. So it kind of, you know, eh. But this episode overall for a 50 plus minute episode, it, it, it was pretty good. So make sure you hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Hit the bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post new content on the channel. And finally, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help us reach 200,000 subscribers and also increase the percentage of watch time on the channel for my actual subscribers. So, uh, we pretty much pick up where we left off. You know, uh, Oliver's actually chatting with uh, Yancey in regards to the car keys. Remember that there are keys missing from Lilo's car, which he was going to use to get rid of the body. But we know Lacey actually took the keys from Oliver. And I believe it was in the last episode that Lacey suggested that. Hey, why don't you talk with Yancey? He has keys for pretty much everything around the compound. So who knows, either Yancey found him or maybe a little kid found him. You never know. So Oliver's trying to be as discreet as possible, saying, well, yeah, it was one of the cars and the keys are missing. And, you know, Yancey didn't really interrogate him, but he was just curious, like, okay, so what kind of keys to what kind of vehicle? So he says he'll be on the lookout for that. But if not, hey, the best thing I can do in the meantime is I can hot wire the car for you. So Oliver's like, okay, um, I'll link up with you soon to let you know if that's a necessity. So then he actually catches Andrew call crawling out from beneath the trailer where he had attempted to hide William's body. Now, I didn't know exactly how much time had passed from the ending of the last episode to where we are currently, but it was probably not that much time at all because I'm thinking, oh, damn, you know, Andrew... At the end of the last episode, you know, he was um, sitting right outside of that trailer crying like, why'd you do it, kid? Why'd you have to do it? So I'm thinking that, well, damn, maybe he, you know, pulled the body in there like he did last week. But then he, I don't know, maybe kind of made a makeshift uh, grave where he just buried William or something, you know, like threw dirt over him. That way, you know, he wouldn't be spotted at first glance if somebody just so happened to be walking by that specific side of the trailer. But, um, you know, Oliver approaches and it's like, hey, what's going on, brother? Uh, nothing. It's like, why, what, what are you doing underneath that trailer? Oh, there was a pipe that was busted. And I'm sorry if my impressions aren't 100%. I'm not sick. I literally just woke up, up, up about 20 minutes ago. So I really can't pull it off. Hang on. How would Andrew say it? Oh, brother, there was a pipe under there that was busted. I needed to fix it. But there's no running water in this trailer. Oh, there was something that needed to be fixed. <laughs> so then he pretty much kind of switched subjects about, well, what about the car? You worried about the car? You, you get the car out of here yet? No, I can't find the keys. I still can't. But I asked Yancey about it. That's not a good idea. Look, he has keys for everything around here. He'll know if that car belongs to the highest or not. Well, what, what are we supposed to do then? Well, I don't know. Just now is not a good time to get the car out of here. You sure? No, no, it's not. It's not. So basically, um... 
Clark actually shows up briefly after these two are almost finished talking because he eventually tells the truth about the whole Williams situation about him, you know, being a traitor and the fact that, you know, he killed him. It's like, well, hey, what I can do is I, we can take the body, hide it in the car with Lilo's. And then when we get rid of the car, that's both of the evidence right there gone. No, I need to tell the highest because he kept saying the highest was raping him and he was going to kill the highest. And I know that. Andrew is telling like a half truth here, but it isn't completely inaccurate because he wanted to learn a martial arts move to use on the highest to kind of incapacitate him when he tries to hurt him again. However, you also look at the fact that, well, Andrew made a solid point. If you were to use that on the highest, what do you think would happen as a result of that? So he wasn't too far off, but of course we know he told this cover story to, you know, maintain his uh, undercover identity. So basically it's like, no, no, I'm going to tell the highest right now. Honestly, I did not think he was going to do it. I thought that was just a cover story until he found out another move. But no, he literally went to see the highest later in the episode, but we'll get to that at another point. So Clark comes by because he's looking for Oliver saying that he needs to speak with Daikon. So Oliver needs to take his place back at the front to guard the uh, front gate. So they make the swap. He's like, brother Andrew, brother Clark. <laughs> All right. So, um... We actually, let's see. Yeah, Elder Mother moves Melinda into Ruth's trailer and snap and tells Melinda to uh, kind of step outside for a moment. She snaps on Ruth about, why were you flirting with the highest? I saw you, you little heathen. Don't be doing that. Okay, sorry, Elder Mother. And then she goes outside to tell Melinda, watch your every move. I don't trust her. Wherever she goes, you shadow her. Yes, Elder Mother. So Melinda tries to kind of chat with Ruth. Is like, so... How are you? Uh, does this place have any soap? No. Why would you think that? Well, um, all the other Elder Mother trailers, they have running water. Well, I don't. Oh. Um, I'm gonna go take a shower. You do that. And I'm thinking that must be a setup because of the fact that wasn't it earlier that same day when Ruth gave Melinda, as Elder Mother put it, a very long and necessary bath? You got the devil smell on you. Take a bath. So why would she need a shower again? I think that was, I don't know, probably just to do a slight interrogation because remember, she's very crappy at her job. But, you know, from there, uh, I just want to make sure I don't jump too far ahead because these two actually have another exchange. Yeah, you know what? I'll, you know, I'll save it because there's, there's so much to talk about. All right, so then we go to the highest and Joan and, you know, the highest is just kind of talking with Joan about the accounting numbers and just says, Oh, everything looks good. Let me just say that we've needed an accountant. No, we've needed an accountant. You know, Lilo, Lilo, he gets so out of shape and mad if things aren't right. But you, you've done a great job getting us in order. Well, th thank you, Hides. Thank you. Thank you. But I just wish we can get more. More, sir? More money. It's like we have millions moving through here, but we get paid in pennies. I wish there was a way. Well, is there a way? Well, your highest, the, the accountants are very, they, they, the, the, the accounts are very tricky, but you said you would like to please me. I, I'll see if there's a way. Thank you. You should go. <laughs> I don't know. It just felt, it was actually an interesting scene because uh, I think this is the first time we've seen the highest in the accounting trailer. To be honest, you know, wasn't it several episodes ago when we see the highest in the kitchen for the first time? where he's talking with Ruth and Tally, and then we see him in the accountant's trailer now, and we saw him in street clothes a few episodes ago. So, I mean, it, it just shows that, believe it or not, we're seeing an interesting range of the character. Yeah, he's still demented, but I just like the fact that we're seeing him interact with various other members of the compound instead of just Daikon or Andrew or River. You know, it's just like those little moments I thought really brought... um some necessary development to the character where if you are on the highest is good side if he does appreciate what you do he will let you know and i mean i did like that scene so after this we actually have um poke who's late for work irene calls them for uh, the sheriff and apparently you know poke wakes up he's like oh wait i'm late um linda had left the house so he ends up trying to call her um you know a melinda is in bed and you know roof is right across from her he's like wait you're not supposed to have that phone well the elder mother gave me this phone i'm on assignment for the highest but i'm on a walk in the back room yeah haha <laughs> so she pretty much tells poke that 
I'll be back by the time you get off work tomorrow morning. Uh, where's the key? Oh, it's underneath the plant where it was last time. Okay. So when she comes out, she kind of just brags about the whole thing. Oh, I can't wait. I'm on an assignment. Yada, yada. Roof is pretty much just saying, hey, uh, it's better to be, you know, seen, not heard basically play things low-key the fact that you're bragging right now it isn't a good look well i can't wait to be enlightened have you been through it i'm going to sleep now remember back in like season one daikon told andrew like if you keep up the good work the highest will enlighten you very soon have you been enlightened brother we do not speak of the enlightenment so basically you know what happens in the highest trailer stays in the highest trailer. Unless he goes to have somebody like Joan or Daikon go get somebody and bring him back. But, you know, in terms of like the things that go on, you don't talk about it. You don't talk about the enlightening. It's like you, it's something that's a mystery for other members to look forward to. So it's interesting because I think Melinda said it an uh, episode or two ago, she's only like, she's in her late teens. So she's still a bit young and naive. So uh, go to bed, little girl. Good night, old lady. All right, you better watch yourself. Don't forget I'm an elder. <laughs> All right, so then it's um, Lacey coming back. Well, Paula coming back into the trailer. Remember, uh, Tally and Joan are like the watchers of the yellow trailer where you have Lacey, Paula, and Zane. Paula's like, hey, 3 a.m., there's going to be a guard change. That's when we sneak out here in the car. Probably one of my, not my favorite line of the episode, but one of my favorite lines. Lacey, can you drive? I don't know why, but that scene just cracked me up. It's like, yeah, she has this elaborate plan to take these keys. Well, I mean, it's not elaborate, but basically, jump in this car. I got the keys. Let's drive the hell out of here. We're not going to the sheriff's office. We're just going to drive. So, hope that car has a good amount of gas in it. That's all I'm saying. At least a split town. So, basically, you know, Zane is still worried about it, and they're telling her, it's like, well, come along. She's like, well, guys, if you end up escaping and I'm left behind, then I could get in trouble for it. That's a very interesting way to look at it because, you know, I've been theorizing for the past few weeks since Joan and Tally are the ones watching over the trailer. I wonder how their role would be impacted. It's kind of like a red trailer red trailer you know where the six members what was it six or seven members who escaped the ones the highest killed i wonder were any of those members leaders the only thing i remember is like two of the individuals uh man and woman they were a married couple that had actually escaped with four of the members and then they got captured and killed so i wonder if any of them were like you know the quote-unquote elders or overseers of the trailer because i'm like i wonder if those six members escaped if they were just regular members and there were supposed to be some elders in the trailer watching, were those elders punished? I don't know. I don't know. But Paul and Lacey said they're going to leave no matter what. So then we have Joan telling uh, Ruth that the highest wants to see her. And you could tell by the look on her face that Melinda's jealous. And then when she goes to get dressed, um, I know Joan's like, I can help you. No, I got this. And then Melinda's like, Joan, sister Melissa, uh, Melinda, is she really going to see the highest? Yes. For what? I don't know. Is she in trouble? I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, Melinda's just jealous as hell. All right, so then we go to uh, Daikon and the Elder Mother, which again was just a hilarious... Elder Mother is just something else. All right, so basically she he's like, Elder Mother, oh, the boy learned to respect. I just wanted to talk to you about the fact those photos that were given to us, we couldn't get anything from them. There was no useful information. Then you need to blame your boys for that. Well, technically, she's not wrong because it was Clark and some other nameless Raku member. They both were in the uh, station taking photos of all the files and pictures, basically all the intel that the sheriff's office has on the compound. So basically, it's really nobody's fault. I mean, Melinda did what her job was, which was to um, create an opening for the two guys to come in there and get the info. It's just the fact that the sheriff's office doesn't have a lot of useful information on the compound. So... Hey, it's nobody's fault, really. And then, so what? Which woman do you have? Which girl do you have on the case? Oh, you know, uh, just uh, you know, Daikon. Men love women. Well, not all men. What's that supposed to be? What's that supposed to mean? Get out of here, bitch! I was like, I forgot what she had said, but I know that she used a couple of curse words. It's like you crazy old woman. 
good night, motherfucker. I don't know what she, I forgot, even though I watched that scene like three times, it was just hilarious. Like, she's just, she, my elder mother just chilling on uh, the porch of her trailer. She just don't give two Fs about nobody. All right, so then we got the highest who wants to have uh, sex with Ruth again because apparently he couldn't get it up the first time. And, you know, do I really need to describe the scene? She takes, she disrobes and, you know, looking all good. Wish she didn't have that berry tattoo on her chest, though. But um, he's like, punish me. So she, this, she slaps him in the face a couple times. And when I tell you, Melissa L. Williams, have you done some training with Catwoman? Because, woman, you know how to use a damn whip. So she actually kind of wraps the whip around his neck and starts to choke him. And he's like, roof, just roof. I have like a theory, like they'll probably have sex one time and then she'll accidentally kill him because I, at some point I'm like, uh, this dude is going to die because <laughs> I wonder what would happen if that were the case. I need to do a video on that. Like the roof and the highest are having sex. It would be like a Medea family funeral when uh, what's her face was having the affair with the husband or the daddy and he actually died during their sex. So it's like, uh oh, so basically, yeah, um, Roof, you're gonna, I'm gonna kill you. And then she just kept going. It was hilarious. So, shut up. I loved it. So basically, after sex, he starts crying like a little bitch. Okay. All right. So then we go to Irene telling the sheriff, "You need to stop watching Melinda. I mean that girl and poke because it's like this is this is basically you watching porn. I think you enjoying this. No, I just there's something ain't right about this, Irene. So he actually ends up seeing. I mean the sheriff was acting like me whenever I'm trying to rewatch a specific scene of an episode I'm reviewing, and there's a blink and you miss moment. And yeah, he actually saw right before the cameras were covered up. He saw two, the two guys from the rock who come in. So, um, yeah, the rock douchey. So he knows that, look, Poke is actually knocked out. Something's wrong here. So he's like, I need to talk to that boy. And so basically he figures out that those guys came in here to get all the evidence on the uh, rack of douche because he actually gets up and checks the drawers that they had opened up and notices all the info was gone. So, yeah, he actually found out this was an infiltration, um, you know, scandal right here. So then we go back to the uh, yellow trailer. Zane is once again telling the girls it's a bad idea to leave. There's a lot of movement going outside right now. And in another part of the trailer, Yancey pokes his head into Tally's window like Smokey did to Craig at the beginning of Friday. And you need to come to the bus with me right now. I can't go right now. Fine, I'll go to the highest. Well, you know what? You do that and I'll go to the highest and tell him what you've been doing to me. Well, he doesn't care about what you got to say. You're a woman. You know what? Do what you got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. So he ends up leaving dejected. Um... Rivers actually having a little chat with Joan. I actually liked it this time because this chat did not overstay its welcome. Uh, basically, just reassurance that, you know what, um, River tells Joan, look, the highest wants to know about getting more money, but you cannot let him know that there is a way to get more money than what's funneled through here because basically that might lead to one thing leading to another, meaning that, oh, wait a minute. So if you can get money from me, Who's to say you haven't been getting money for yourself? Because remember, that's River's big plan to funnel money for him, Joan, and other escapees. So once they leave the compound, they're going to come out of here with a nice little payday. And from there, you know, Joan is like, man, you're cold blooded. But, you know, hey, those people who tried to escape earlier, they died. But guess what? We need to keep thinking forward with the plan. And that's honestly... Is, is it cold-blooded or logical? It's kind of like, you know, just to use an example, like let's say you have a death in a family. That's not to say you aren't cold-hearted if you aren't emotional, but if it's somebody who's close to you and like, let's say you have a, let's say it's like a parent or somebody like that or a aunt or uncle and you're one of the few people that can help get the thing organized. Yes, you have every right to be emotional, but there's always that one person who's kind of like the rock. It's like, okay, we got to get this funeral plan and everything. So, uh, it's not to say they didn't love them any less. It's just the fact that, hey, guess what? Yes, they passed, but we need to get this thing put together for their funeral. And then, you know, th you know, they'll mo mourn later. I'm kind of like that person, not to, you know, jinx or anything. It's like, well, Jeremy, wait till you lose somebody close to you. It's not that. It's just the fact that crying isn't going to get this stuff settled because you typically I never cry at funerals. So it's one of those things where, OK, they're gone, but business has to be handled. And once that's done, then I can grieve properly. So, you know, for river i get it it's like yes they died it sucks and if i'm not mistaken 
I forgot who said it. Uh, I want to say Joan was the one who said, yeah, yeah. River was the one like, Joan, I don't think they should escape tonight. My gut is telling me now it's not a good time. Joan's like, look, we went over the plan a bunch of times. We know how it's going to go. They're going to go out first, set things up, and then we'll go next. But yeah, basically River is the one who's like, you know what? Hey, dry your tears. We got to keep this plan going. And, you know, Joan also said, well, hey, the highest asked for roof. So at least your plan with her is working out. And uh, so the roof is with highest and she says, oh, you did better this time. So, no, please stay. No, I'm going to leave, but you can watch me dress. So this leads to probably my favorite part of the episode because I had no idea how to react to it. So Ruth gets dressed and ironically enough, as soon as she's fully robed, Andrew comes in. Your highest I need to speak with you about something. Okay. And then, you know, Ruth leaves. I'm here to beg for your forgiveness. You know, the highest is kind of on a high right now. And I don't mean from drugs like, you know what? I was a good, he's thinking to himself, yeah, I did good with Ruth. Yeah, I want to tap that again. I did better. I was able to get it up this time. Allegedly. So basically from there, he says, I killed the boy. You what? Yeah, he, he ran away from me screaming he was a traitor and I, I, I killed him. And when I tell you, I'm like, okay, yeah, I mean, this is apparently the highest is F boy, you know, so he, I mean, he might feel some kind of way about it, but maybe because he's with Ruth now, allegedly, he doesn't care. But, um, when he literally switched to like a laugh, a psychopath, just laughing hysterically, I'm like, I, Andrew's reaction was my reaction. I'm like, this was not what I expected. So apparently he's like, oh, this is great. See, I, I told I told Daikon you were with us. And I'm like, what? Because I, I honestly really wanted to know where this was going to go. Like, you know, if Andrew would say, yeah, because, you know, he kept ask, he kept begging me to help him because he said you were hurting him. And, you know, uh, I wonder if he was going to throw in that line that he told Oliver that, oh, yeah, I wanted to kill the highest. So it's like I had to kill him to protect you. But basically, Di um. Apparently, it was Daikon's plan to tell William to tell Andrew that the highest was hurting him and to help him out. But, <laughs> well, talk about being wrong. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, he was wrong, all right. And he's like, don't don't worry about it. Hey, you, you are still loved. He's with the Raku now. He's free. When I tell you that scene, have me going, what the fuck? So to everybody um, in the comments section, I think of the video I did last week about Andrew killing um, William. You were right. A lot of people did say, hey, you know what? I think Daikon put him up to it because he knew that wasn't the right stick. That wasn't the size of a wishbone. So if you, there were a lot of people that said that. Congratulations. You were right. So I wonder how this is going to counteract something that happens in the very next scene. But we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. All right, so Roof actually catches up to River as Roof is going to her trailer. River is right, uh, right there intercepting her, saying, hey, watch out, Daikon's going in that direction. Don't tell me what to do. Well, I'm telling you, just don't, don't tell me what to do, River. Okay, fine. So then we go to Clark talking with Daikon, and apparently, you know, he looked up some information, and all the websites and the news stories about Andrew's wife being, you know, killed or killed, that was only on the local news. It didn't really break outside of that specific area. So there is some very um, reasonable doubt that he did his job. Not to mention the fact that he said, I went by the house and saw the lights on. Now, here's the thing with that. I don't think Sarah is there. Well, then again, you know, Sarah and Malcolm were there, but it's possible that they left. So I think when we move on to what Daikon says next, you know what? Have Oliver, do you trust him? Yeah, he's one of my best guys. Have Oliver go to the house. And if she's there, have her brought back to me unharmed. So basically, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen with this angle because of the point that there's doubt that Andrew killed his wife, but then there's proof that he actually did kill for the highest because the, oh yeah, I do think the highest said, where's the body? But Andrew never answered the question. He said that, you know, he said he was going to be a traitor and hurt you or whatever. So the body of William would be proof that he's on his side. But if Sarah's actually there, which I pray she isn't, I wonder how that's going to play out. And remember, I did a theory a while ago saying, I bet Malcolm and Daikon will team up. But then again, Daikon isn't the one who's going to be going to the house. It's going to be Oliver. So I wonder how that's going to play out. So um, from there, mm, 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 mm. 
So yeah, so Tally tells Joan she has to go to the bathroom, but I'm pretty much guessing that Tally was going to go to the bus with Yancey just to make sure he doesn't go to see the highest. But Joan's like, well, hey, you know, it's it's laid out, meaning that if you go to the bathroom, I got to go. Can you hold it till the morning? OK, never mind. So that leaves me to wonder whether or not Yancey will tell on Tally. Uh, then we got Clark going up to Oliver to give the assignment about Andrew's house. So basically leave right now. Go see if the girl's there. And if she is, bring her back unharmed. So then we go to the final scene. Uh, it looks like, you know, we have Ruth hearing something and it looks like Daikon is driving across the uh, compound on the four wheeler and she actually rushes to get up, get dressed and leave. And Melinda is close behind her because remember, Elder Mother had her follow Ruth everywhere because she doesn't trust her. So Ruth approaches Daikon. This is kind of like in the back of the compound where the uh, uh, punishment trailers and everything are. And Daikon is like, don't do this, Ruth. What are you doing? Well, I love you and stuff like this. And I mean, this is Ruth going rogue because remember, River told her, stay away from Daikon. But it, at this case, you know, he's like reassuring her, look, no, you don't know what you're doing. I'm a monster. Fine. Come with me. What? Yeah, come with me. So as she follows Daikon, her eyes actually fall into the inside of like one of these like containers and sees and it's a blink and you miss moment like i had to unfortunately freeze frame to get it so it's a big graphic so i'm not going to include it in the video trust me it'll make one hell of a thumbnail though and she looks in and sees the uh corpses of i believe the individuals who were basically got their heads caved in by the highest in the forest so those six individuals who escaped i believe those bodies are right there i do think it was mentioned an episode or two ago that those escapees would be buried underneath the gardens for fertilizer. So I guess the the graves haven't been made yet. So that was an interesting ending. So I wonder how Melinda's going to react to this. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. This was my episode review for uh, The Code. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens next week. I do have a couple discussion videos I'll get done on this episode because it was so good. And as always, if you would like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App.